I do not think the card is Snapcaster Mage, but I think it's going to show up in plenty of decks. The fact that you can just kill it with Lightning Bolt and Abrupt Decay and move on with life makes it an entirely different animal than something like Snapcaster Mage, which is pretty much pure value at any stage of the game. Mana Accelerant is how these players are going to start. Mize with a Vase of Rich into a Bird's Paradise. Ache with a Noble Hierarch. Off of a Temple Garden that was found via Wooded Foothills is our last round of Swiss action is underway. Two collected company decks will do battle here. For Mize, if he wins, he's into the top eight. If Ake win or lose, he's into the top eight. It's all about seeding for him. And I like this matchup from Logan's side of the table here. Uh, both these decks are doing a lot of the similar stuff, but Logan has a combo kill rolled into the deck, which uh, and either side of it, either infinite damage or infinite life, is good enough to beat Albert. And I think Logan's deck is just much better at uglying up the game. Like, when things slow down, he has more cards like Kitchen Things, Gavany Township, Eternal Witness that are just very well suited to play a game like this. Whereas Albert has more cards like Loxodon Smiter and Wild Nacoddle, which can get invalidated as the game progresses. It's Belskite Wall of Roots. That was the turn there for Mize, along with the Gavany Township. Ake does have a Wild Nakato in hand, but you can just see how Wild Nakato lines up on this board. Exactly. And, and Gavany Township is an incredible weapon in this matchup as well for Logan. Even on this board, Logan can just start activating the Township, and it's going to be really hard for Albert to make progress on the ground. At that point, he has to do something pretty crazy with Knight of the Reliquary to be able to proceed, because all of his other threats don't do very much. Sacred Fighter Gun in the Battlefield on tap. That's going to be Nakato into a three-power creature. And now here is a Path to Exile to get Spellskite off the battlefield. Not the best use of Path to Exile, but it's just a necessary one. He's got to do it, but, you know, with Gavany Township in play, uh, Logan's, you know, needs and utility for mana, it, it gets to be close to unlimited. I mean, he can cast spells and use da Township in the same turn. If he draws a second Township, he starts approaching being able to activate that. So uh, even with all the mana in play, Logan is very happy to get Path in spots like this. He's got plenty to do. He'll get a Plains. But he's got a lot to work through here, so we'll see what Mize's hand looks like as we make our way through his third turn of the game. Mize will draw a card. Ah, oh, there's that famous Logan, Logan Mize rub of the card before he draws it. Saw a lot of that in Chicago when he got second place at that Open Series event. Curious if he has a card like Collected Company in hand just yet. There's Malira. And one thing, Ake, that can't be. It's the infinite cut life gain combo. Yeah, either side of the infinite combo is good. Damage or life gain, uh, both result in victories. And Mize has a lot of ways to get to it with all these cords of callings, Collected Companies, Eternal Witness to get back the pieces. It's not too tough for him to accomplish. It does take some time. And, and honestly, he doesn't even have to accomplish it. That, that's why I think the matchup is so solid for him is uh, he can just play a game of, of blockers and Gavany Township. If he happens to assemble an infinite combo, that's good, and he can win the game on the spot, but it's not a requirement. Well, Nakatl is attacking for five right now, two Exalted Triggers. Well, you're going to go on Chump Block and Duty. And uh, part of the reason why he's able to do this again because he has four copies of Eternal Witness in his deck, so he can Chump Block now, witness that back. Move forward accordingly. Mize has at least one witness in hand, a couple of lands too, but it looks like he's gearing up for a little bit of a longer game to maybe go towards the township activations. Yeah, I mean, Albert passing the turn here, probably a sign of collected company. Mm -hmm. But if Albert is attacking with a bunch of creatures all at once, Gavin Township and a sea of blockers probably contains it. And if Albert is attacking one at a time, Logan can jump block for a very long time uh, with most of his draws. Well, Oliver, it looks like it's going to get a counter. Though, Mize is trying to figure out how he wants to navigate through this turn. It's another Malira. That makes the first one very expendable. Once our teeth is the land, Mize will pass back the turn, and I think we got a collective company on the way. Yes, we do. So Ake will take a look at the top six. We'll see if he can find two creatures. Pretty likely in this very creature-heavy deck. The voice of Resurgence over there, along with the Tarmogoyf. Doing a check. He got an instant of land, along with the creature in the graveyard. So Tarmogoyf appears to be a 3-4. 
But those threats aren't too bad for Logan. Again, we got any township in play. Uh, he can really turtle up here and make attacking hard. The, the card that's threatening from Logan's spot now is Knight of the Reliquary, because there's a lot to be done with that, including getting Kessick Wolf Run. Mm -hmm. That card pairs very nicely with Exalted and Tarmogoyf and can start threatening a lot of damage, even if Logan starts gumming up the works here with Gabney Township and a lot of blockers. That's the card that pushes through the damage. But Ink's got to find it. Now, it does appear as though he does have Knight of the Reliquary in hand. And if that's the case, can find that pretty quickly and start getting to work. Now, e even with Knight of the Reliquary, right now, Ake's mana is a little bit constrained. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a lot of mana to work with. Sounds like to me he wouldn't mind drawing some lands here. Looks like Nakato's going to come into the red zone again. Oh, yeah, that's like he's getting in with a couple of creatures now. And perhaps Voice of Resurgence, too. Yeah, at this stage of the game, Voice of Resurgence is more powerful dead than alive. Uh, so Albert may want to throw that into an attack just to push through some damage. Yeah, you'd read that elemental token. It's bigger. Looks like he's happy to have it on defense for the time being, though. Maya's going to sacrifice a Windswept Teeth. Now, keep in mind, Logan appears to only have one card left in hand at this point. It's an Eternal Witness, so he doesn't have very much going on. The card that he has on the Battlefield that matters is that Gavany Township. He's going to make his creatures big try to stabilize some things until he's able to draw some relevant cards. You know, the tough part here is that Logan has not been in a position just yet to cast a spell and use Gavney Township in the same turn, and those are the types of spots where he really starts pulling ahead. Well, here are your blockers. Malira in front of the Wild Coddle. Wall of Roots in front of the Tarmogoy for now a Gavany Township activation. Now keep in mind with Wall of Roots, it gives minus zero, minus one counters. And then Gavany Township gives plus one, plus one counters. So, so they don't wash? It's a little strange. I say if Albert can get this Wall of Roots off the table, it makes everyone's life a little easier. He does have a lightning bolt in hand. Yeah, there you go. See, now we don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Albert. <laughs> so, plus one, plus one counters wash off minus one, minus one counters, but do not wash off minus zero, minus one counters? I believe that is the case. Gotcha. Yes. That is complicated. A little bit. A little bit. Now, here's another relic where I great start here for Albert. Yeah, this is, this is an awesome opening here, and, and Logan is really floundering. And these green mirrors, you know, it's just... Give me some big creatures that are efficient and get to work. Yeah, Albert has done a very good job thus far of not giving Logan much breathing space. You know, he's been pressuring him uh, on a lot of these turns. And like I mentioned, he hasn't, Logan has not been in a position to make plays and activate Township in the same turn. And he's been sort of spinning his tires a little bit as a result. I mean, no Logan has the Eternal Witness in the hand. Outside of that, he does not have very much going on. Looks like he picked up a copy of Quarter Calling. So he's going to play the Witness. Get back, Malira. Deploy that, pass the turn back. Now, the thing is, is he can still work his way into the Infinite Combo pretty easily. Yeah, for sure. Uh, quarter calling if he draws a piece or collected company can always rip off uh, two perfect creatures uh -huh. and do it. Uh, given the way the game is going, I don't think he has the luxury of playing around a removal spell. He may have just to say, okay, take all the lumps, hope I don't die, hope there's no removal spell there, your hand's just landing creatures, and then uh, draw into the perfect piece. Here come the knuckleheads. I don't know what this looks like it may block. And the only critical piece of the puzzle here is Malira. That can't be involved in any blocks if mm. Logan's trying to set up infinite. The thing, though, is he doesn't really want to block on this turn because he has Court of Calling in hand. So every creature represents a mana, and depending on what he draws, he could be very tight on mana. There's Kasali Pride Mage. Now I'm curious to see how aggressive 
Logan wants to get in trying to find the pieces to be able to do this because he's certainly under the gun right now. Now the query is going to get a lot bigger. He take a draw step here. Soul roll himself a touch. I mean, if he draws Viscerous here, well, let's say, he's got it. Yeah, if, or if he draws Kitchen Finks, he's got it. Yeah. Either one, because he has Court in hand. But, the, you know, the one thing he could have done this turn, for example, is on the upkeep, he could have courted First Seer with Give the three creatures and a land, sacrifice a witness, you know, sacrifice a, a bird to try to find Kitchen Finks. You know, something like that. Yeah. And I think Logan here may just try his best to block out of this turn using Wall of Roots, Eternal Witness, Birds of Paradise, and try to set up the line of play that you mentioned. He doesn't really care that much about triggering Voice of Resurgence here because his whole plan is to go infinite. So if Albert gets one more token here, it doesn't really matter because Logan's going to die the following turn regardless. He's going to get overwhelmed. Albert's going to get a Bloodstained Mire. He's going to sacrifice that. This is basically just growing the night. So the hope here for Logan's side is that he's able to block out of this turn, keep Malira in play, and then probably set up the exchange you're talking about, where he cores for Viscerous here, he gets a lot of looks at finding the last piece of the puzzle, and either infinite damage or infinite life is good enough to win the game. Ankle on tap. Take a draw step here. As you mentioned, this is a situation where Logan really can't beat him rules. No, that, I, I think Logan's not even playing around at this point because... Uh, he's already barely holding on to things, and he can't afford to play around Path or Lightning Bolt. He just has to assume that the last card in hand is a land or a creature. Kessick Wolfron was the draw. Pretty good one at that. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Albert send everybody in except for those Noble Hierarchs. It's a lot of damage coming across. This is about 10 minutes remaining to sign up for the Modern Challenge. About 10 minutes remaining to sign up for the Modern Challenge. Also, if you have not yet turned in your voucher for the Tassifer Playmat, there is still time to do so. Well, the blocks here to save maximum damage has to be involving getting in front of Tarmogoyf and getting in front of Nyla Reliquary. Those are the two largest threats. With Keswick Wolf Run, he can only give Trample to one of them. And Birds of Paradise, Eternal Witness, and Wall of Roots are all non-essential elements here. Logan can afford to chump block with all of them. But as you mentioned, uh, I think the most reasonable sequence here is to block a, however you want to block to chump block, cord for Viscerous here, sacrifice your chump blockers, and hope to find Red Cap or Kitchen Finks or failing that collected company, which gives you a lot of looks at either of those two cards. Cord will give you redraws too. Yeah, and yep. Cord gives you some redraws. Just by, you know, just by looking at things, you can tell Logan gets a lot of looks at it. Yeah. To try to go infinite. And he doesn't have to care, again, about triggering the voice. Because you can tell from this block, if Logan doesn't get it done this turn, it doesn't matter that there's another elemental in play. Logan's getting overwhelmed here. He doesn't have that much life to work with. Yeah, he just can't die here. Yeah. That's all. Because he's dead next turn. Or you can, if you're Logan, I think you can safely assume, okay, I'm dead next turn. But the only thing that doesn't get to block here is Malira. That can't happen. And keep in mind the Wolf Run activation would be for three. Or excuse me, it would be for two. It'd be for two. And it looks like Egg is just passing. And he's not making a move. Logan, Logan needs to with that court. Yeah, he's costing himself a couple looks at it. Now, the problem is, with Ake passing on the wolf run, if Logan goes and sacrifices everything to Viscerous here, then he can give one of the blotch creatures trample and deal mm -hmm. a lot of damage. I don't know if it actually changes the calculus here at all. Logan might be dead next turn, regardless of what happens. Uh, but depending on the specific size of the creature, how much mana Ake has available, and, and so on, sacrificing the creatures could become problematic here. Elemental token here for Voice of Resurgence, but as we mentioned, we don't feel that one matters too much. There's Viscerous here. It seems as though Logan knows the plan here. And because Ake only has the one wolf run to give Trample, if Logan sacrifices one of the creatures, he might as well sacrifice the second. 
Yeah, I think so. It, it's it's, free, it's either sacrifice neither to keep yourself alive or sacrifice both if you can survive the wolf run activation. Two-headed giant players, your pairings for round three are in... Take a look. Bottoms up. Not happy. Sack this one, too. I just got to be careful here. Well, again, once you sacrifice one, you can sacrifice all of them. They're all blocked. Only one of them is getting trampled. Very true. Very true. That's not it. That. I mean, if he's if it's on, I suppose collected company is probably too good to pass up. Yep. But uh, if Logan's keeping it on top, it's probably a kill. Yep. Quarter calling. Go get kitchen. Fink. Uh, one two three. One two. Yeah, you can just get red cap there. Yeah. Red cap thinks doesn't matter. Yep. He'll show him. Yeah. And Albert wants to see it as he should. Show me red cap. Show me thinks. Either one. Yeah, there's thinks. Just go infinite. And all he, that can do is deal damage. He has no work around to this. Yeah, and he's going to concede the game. So, Logan Mize sequences things appropriately, gets a little bit lucky. And he does win game number one, here, game number one excuse me, over Albert Ake. Cobbs on company up a game over Naya company. To, to Logan's credit there, he, he identified what he had to do there. Yep. I mean, you know, there was no way for him to manage the game by blocking and removal spells anymore. And... Once that became clear, he flipped into just assemble the combo, keep myself alive as long as possible, gave himself the most looks at it as possible, was able to assemble infinite life, and we're on to game two. He's always going to have that advantage in the matchup, that he has the combo that he can go to, and Albert does not. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're looking at threats like Smiter and Nakadal, they, you know, they're good when Ake is leveraging his, his explosive aggressive draws, but when the game slows down, uh, that infinite combo is just something that, that Albert can't really respond to. Well, to the sideboards we're going to go, we are going to start with Ake, who's got two Stony Silence, a Kataki Wars Wage, two Choke, two Thalia Guardian, three Raven, a Scavenging Ooze, an Aethersworn Canist, four Feed the Clans, a Magus of the Moon, and a Blood Moon. Scavenging Ooze is the obvious one. Yeah, Scavenging Ooze is very good in the matchup, breaks up Eternal Witness. There's a lot of graveyard shenanigans going on in Logan's deck. I, I think the Blood Moon effects are also fine here. Uh, they're, they're not necessarily going to lock Logan out. He does have a lot of mana creatures, but you look at the mana base, uh, it's tight. He needs to get a lot of non-basic lands. And I think the Blood Moon effects have the possibility of stealing something. The other side of things, we'll take a look at Logan Mize's sideboard. Four Path to Exile, four Voice of Resurgence, a Tassiker, and even Mind Sensor, a Norza of Pontiff, a Bird of Forge Center, a Scavenging Ooze, a Limbala, and an Eidolon of Rhetoric. I think the sideboarding here is going to be pretty light. I, I think Forge Tender is okay in the matchup, as is Scavenging Ooze. I like four copies of Path to Exile a lot as well. Uh, the rest of the utility creatures I wouldn't really touch. We have talked about the Star City Game Summer Sale a couple times this weekend, and we've got our brand new one going right now. You can save on select non-basic lands, like a breeding pool, Sacred Foundry, or Wooded Foothills, or heck, even a Steam Vent. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a, a lot of the non-basic lands we've been featuring over the course of the week, on like Fetch Lands and Ravnica Duel Lands. They're available on sale right now, along with a variety of other non-basic lands. We've got a new sale every day at 11 a.m. on the website, all August long. Standard favorites, as you'll see, on sale all month long as well. StarCityGames.com slash more information about the fantastic summer sale that is currently taking place as we do get ready here for game numero dos. Logan Mize able to get there. I might have gotten burned. I, I, I recently purchased some guild pack stomping grounds. Mm, tis, tis. Gonna have to look. You like the old ones. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I know. I know. The new, one, new one's got good art. I, I'm fine with it, but it's also just, you know, when you compare it to Legacy, for example, you want to get beta duels or black border duels or alpha and beta cards, the cost increase is pretty significant. You're looking at, you know, return to Ravnica Stomping Grounds versus the old Ravnica Stomping Grounds. The price difference is negligible. That's true. That's true. Look at Mice having another good tournament here. Less so on the foils, though. The old foils yeah, worth no, quite want. a bit more. But, yeah, foils is not my thing, so it's fine. So, for me, if it's foils, it's either all foils or no foils. Yeah. I know in between. I've played all foil decks before, but I'm not going to play, you know, like halvesies. I just don't like the way they feel. They do feel different. They're a lot stiffer. Yeah. Not a fan. They need to be double sleeved too. And I don't like playing double sleeved decks because right. they're enormous. Just it's weird that, you know, playing a like they're both sixty cards, but one's double sleeved and one's not. And it feels different when you just play a sixty card non double sleeved deck. Mm -hmm. You're just used to how it feels in your hands and how big it is. When you have a double sleeved one, you're like, this thing is what is this two hundred cards? 
it feels gigantic. It's very strange. But it doesn't come up that much anymore since, you know, we're in the booth. Yeah, we don't need to play very much anymore. Though my deck is out on the floor right now, but no foils in it. I expect as much. Any mountains in that deck? You got like one? Got a Guru Mountain in there, some Beta Bolts. You have a Guru Mountain? I have a couple, yeah. You just retire, jeez. No, I mean, you know, living in LA is pretty expensive. I could only <laughs> live off of Guru Lands for so long. <laughs> I don't know. Pay for rent, eat in and out, you're good. Not, not, not rent for very long. <laughs> Going to get ready for game number two here between Logan Mize and Albert Ake. The Collective Company decks have shown up a little bit here. We've seen a lot of Grixis Control, some fringe combo decks. Haven't seen a lot of Collective Companies be cast, but both of these players, the opportunity to make top eight here. Again, Albert Ake is a lock no matter what happens. The season are number two overall seed right now. He's in second place in the tournament. And then for Mize, he's got to win to get in. If he loses, no good. And they can't draw because Logan 11 3 and 1 doesn't appear, to be, doesn't appear to be making it. Looks like all of our X and 3s are playing. Now, two players that we know are locked in are Tom Ross and Michael Majors. Ross, of course, with Infect. Majors with Grixis Control with four copies of Jace Vryn's Prodigy. And a lot banging on this match for other people. You know, Albert knocks out Logan, and all of a sudden there's a slot that's opened up for one of the people at the end of the X3 records on Breakers. Maybe even an X3-1 can slip in as a result. Mm -hmm. If... Uh, Logan is to win here. It's really bad news for other people who are playing towards the bottom of the X3 standings. Ankle starts things off with a basic forest into a noble hierarch. Mize with the Vernon Catacombs. He'll sacrifice that. Go down at least 19, maybe more. And Magus of the Moon already in Albert's hand. This could be in a really explosive opening here. Logan just searching. He kind of shortcutted himself into this? <laughs> <laughs> to like save time or something? Yep. Uh, this could be a disaster. This is some not great news. Because he didn't do anything on turn one. Is there some anti-searching effect? Maybe he's playing around a mind sensor? Uh, potentially, because it's Naya colors. Yeah, that, that, that's my best guess. I doubt he was just shortcutting, but Magus of the Moon is not what he wants to see after doing that. Not really. There's another Noble Hierarch. Here's an attack for four Exalted. All right, he's got an answer in Path to Exile. I could have gotten awkward fast. Only one planes in the deck for Logan. Very fortunate to have drawn it there. Yes. Let's see if Ake has a follow-up. Got a Dramoka's command in hand. He'll play a land for the turn. Because he, he has not played a land yet. Yeah, turn two Magus and then got path. Yep. So there's Bloodstained Mire. And now there's a wild McCoddle. And now we go back Miser's way. Does he have land number three is the question. This is last call to sign up for today's modern challenge. Last call to sign up for the modern challenge. Last call to sign up for the modern challenge. Ake is very light on action from here, though. I believe he just has Remoka's command and lands. Oh, there's Malira. Ake will sacrifice the Bloodstained Mire. That might be the Sacred Foundry. Ake has decided he'll go with the Stomping Ground instead. I feel like I say this a lot, but Collective Company, best draw here for Albert, it seems. Yep. I mean, the, the deck can get some explosive draws, and then Knight of the Reliquary plus Collective Company is its staying power. Here comes Nakadal. To exalt the trigger. That thing's a 5 5. Elias does have another copy of Path to Exile in hand. Maybe he wants to fire it off here. Looks like he does. This is also, uh, you know, kind of a study of contrast here. I think we're going to see Dramoka's command response. 
when Logan passed Albert, it feels like Albert has very little to do with the mana. Mm -hmm. When Albert passed Logan, it feels like Logan, uh, other elements of Logan's hand start getting unlocked. Pat the Exile over his life. Such a broke his command. Nakato fought Malira, and the Noble Hire got a counter. Eternal Witness to draw for Logan. However, you can see his mana. There is a bit of an issue here. There's a Gavany Township. Double Green is not here. However, Mize does have a copy of Collective Company in hand. Kitchen Finks so, as well. All is not lost. He's actually got some things to do. Aka's going to untap. No Collective Company to cast. He just draws a card. Looks like he picked up a copy of Loxodon Smiter. Having big creatures is certainly nice, but Smiter does not have a lot of text in this matchup. Yeah, I, mean, I actually would have assumed that that card was removed from his deck. Here comes Noble Hierarch. It'll be a 3-4. But for now, Mize is going to cast Collective Company. I, it looks like he may have the combo close to rolled up here. He's looking at some combo pieces, plus has Cord in hand. Now, of course, there's the, the issue of what happens if Albert has a removal spell. Mm -hmm. But Viscera Seer and Red Cap are in there. However, remember, you can't get Red Cap off a of Collective Company. It's got to be three or less. Yep. Otherwise, we'd just be hitting Emrakul's with Collective Company. But th this is a great eternal witness here for Logan as there's multiple good paths to take. If he's got the combo rolled up, he can take Malira if that's the piece he's missing. Path if he needs to defend himself. Or Collected Company if he wants to just continue to play this value game. Looks like he wants Path to Exile. He wants an answer to some creatures. Eternal Witness is going to be on chump blocking duty. He'll block and now he'll scry. Take a look at the hand before he moves forward. Staying on top. There's the big dumb elephant. Thud. Nakel will pass the turn back. Path to exile in hand. Mize has one too. Just picked up a copy of Temple Guard. That's the second green man he needed. Looks like everything might be online here for Logan now. Finks. There'll be a trigger. Life will be gained. One piece away from the combo. Temple Garnello Battlefield tapped. And cord in hand. Yep. Can't do it just yet, but. You can see it's not that hard to assemble. Lightning Bolt the draw. Huge draw yeah. for Albert. He needs, he needs ways to interact. He's got a path in hand, too. He's going to start with Lightning Bolt going out to Viscerous here. Logan will sacrifice that. A little scry action here. But this is what, you know, we talked about this a little bit before where, you know, Logan can ugly up the game and not necessarily have to combo off to win. So Albert has to leave removal in his hand to be able to break up the combo should it show up. But also be able to fight on the board. There's Path to Exile. I mean, he, one thing you can note from this game, you mentioned ugling it up. Look at Logan's life total. Yeah, he's got a lot to work with. A 21. We're in the mid game here. We're working our way towards the late game. Attack for five right now. Not so bad. Though I believe this is worse than just having attacked with the Smiter solo. I don't know if he's playing around something like Murderous Cut, but... Feels like the two Exalted Triggers are better than dealing one with the Noble Hierarch. So might as well try to rebuild towards the combo again.
internal witness in hand. Looks like two quarter callings. Pretty good grip. He's going to set up for a core. Does have triple green out there. Yeah, I mean, this could be something like cord into Fink's untap and combo out. Yep, doesn't take much. Here comes the elephant. Looks like a path to exile here. No land to search up here for Albert. Two forests, one plains, one mountain. He's got them all on the battlefield already. Tarmogoyf is the play. Will Mai's play collect a company right now? You can company for two. The answer is yes. Yep. This allows him to get Malira if he wants it. Yeah, that or Interfenza. Yeah, either's fine. Yep. I'm going to go with Anafenza, Kintree, Spear. Yeah, Anafenza is probably a little bit better here than Malira because in the event Albert has some interaction, Malira kind of doesn't do anything unless you're comboing out where Anafenza has a text box. Yeah, there's some bolster is a text box. Yeah. Doesn't play a huge role, but it's... Better than nothing. Yeah, it's, yeah that's the best way to put it. Godless Shrine the draw. Might be eternal witness time. Looks like it is. Gonna get back collected company. Take you right into Value Village. Godless Shrine untapped. Yeah, and I really like the way that Logan's playing this because he could just try to rip off the combo if he wanted to. He has the tools to do it. But what he's doing is, I'm just going to generate a lot of value in case you have a removal spell in your hand. Eventually, I'm going to get to the combo, or the, the ground's going to get so mucked up that you can't attack and I can beat you with Gavity Township instead. So this is a very good way of, you know, incidentally assembling the combo without risking too much in the event that Albert has a removal spell. Yeah, it's got to be frustrating for Albert because he just really can't punch through. Castic Wolfram is really a nice draw here to start being able to punch through his real amount of damage. And this Tarmogoyf right now is a five-power creature because of double exalted. But Logan's making life pretty tough here. You just collect a company. And now he's found a spell skite, which is just perfect. Yeah, that, that bricks the... Right. That bricks the uh, Keswick Wolfram activation. The before blocks get a spell skite. Now it's in play. There's no opportunity to respond. Mm -hmm. Collective Company just resolves and the creature's in play. There's some bolster triggers here to be had too, because Anafenza, this is what you were talking about with having more of a relevant text box than yep. Valera. And Logan already has Gavney Township on the battlefield, so maybe we go a different way. Eternal Witness is going to jump in front of Tarmogoyf. There's a Keswick Wolfron activation. I want to send that to Spellskite. Yeah, I'll take two. And now Logan can just go for it if he wants to because he has Spellskite protection. Yeah. And you see him moving a little bit faster now. Drew a copy of Kitchen Finks, so he'll gain two. There'll be a bolster trigger. Here's Court of Calling. It'll be for one, and that's going to do it. Logan is going to win this match here over Albert Ake. Two games to zero. I was on company, going to take care of Nia Company. You see the way those games play out. I think it's going to happen like that more often than not. It feels very favorable for Abzan. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Albert's got some game, and uh, his draws are going to be more consistently explosive than Logan's, who has some more cumbersome cards in this deck. But once the game gets ugly, you know, it's hard for Albert to attack, and Logan is always threatening to be able to go off at a moment's notice. So you can assemble an infinite combo from very low base. Both pieces of the infinite combo, be it life gain or damage, are good against Albert. And uh, once Logan slows the game down, it 
feels like it's a really uphill battle for Albert. We saw that definitely on display in game one, where Albert had a lot of good stuff going on and still couldn't quite punch through lethal. And then game two uh, just wasn't able to uh, mount enough of an offense before Logan started uglying up the game.